Hey guys, Flay here. Today I will be making a summary optimization guide for NWalker. I will be also mentioning some other things that you need to know aside from the rotation itself which is very important as a melee. Optimization tip number 1. Keeping melee uptime. The most important thing about optimizing is to keep melee uptime and to keep your GCTs rolling always. The ABC, that is the always be casting factor, is the most important thing about damage on this game. You should always try to stand max melee from a boss hitbox as much as you can because this enables you to get out of close range mechanics much easier and to get back in to keep your GCD rolling. Momosama had made a video from Heavensward that had in-depth explanation of everything that you need to know about melee uptime. I will be leaving a link to that video in the description below so make sure to check that out as that video alone brought me very far in melee gameplay. Optimization tip number 2. Knowing both loop and ad hoc rotation. Ad hoc refers to the freestyle samurai rotation except doing it the proper way. Looping on the other hand refers to the optimal way of playing on a fight whereby you have a 100% uptime. Ideally, on a good ad hoc, you will be using some random fillers or known to ensure that you still fit your biggest hitting skills under raid buffs. However, in cases you messed up and drifted many things out of your rotation, you can still pull ad hoc while getting very close to no DPS loss. Here are some basics of ad hoc. Keep the core of your rotation going. This includes melee uptime. Minimize the use of Yukikaze under Meikyo. In cases where Higanbana drops, quickly do a Hakaze into Yukikaze into Higanbana. Another example is, let's take the scenario of Higanbana being at 10 seconds and you have 0 cents. You can do a Hakaze into a Shifu into a Kasha and then back into a Hakaze then you Kaiten into a Higanbana. This will in turn refresh Higanbana as close as possible to falling off. Try to aim back to get into a loop. This is the hardest part as this will require you to have near perfect execution to get back on a loop. Hence this is where spreadsheet rotation comes into play which I will be talking about later on. Ad hoc will tend to have a weird filler timing or close to known. Keep that in mind when you are recovering your rotation post downtime. Sometimes it will include a 1 GCD filler out of nowhere to ensure all raid buffs are hit with our biggest hitting skills. It can go up to 3 to 4 more GCD fillers even on a 2.14 skill speed GCD tier. Knowing ad hoc is extremely important to play as a samurai as it also gives you the adaptability to adapt effectively to downtime on a fight especially during prog. It also helps you recover your rotation and get back on track in case you died. Optimization tip number 3. Minimizing the use of Yukikaze under Meikyu. The reason for this is pretty simple. Doing a Hakaze into Yukikaze is a 2 GCD combo, while doing the Gekko and Kasha combo is a 3 GCD combo. Hence, using Meikyu to do the 3 GCD combos is a DPS game. Aside from the opener, we should also aim to minimize Yukikaze under Meikyo in our rotation. There is one important thing however to note. In the case of doing Yukikaze under Meikyo earns you an extra mid array under raid buffs, it is worthwhile to do so as it is more party damage. Optimization tip number 4. Third Eye Optimization now that Third Eye gives us 10 Genki on Endwalker, it is a much bigger potency gain than what it used to be on Shadowbringers. Currently, each Third Eye use is a gain of 108 potency. That is, if we account for the Genki it gives us. In the case where you use Third Eye 10 times in a fight, it would earn you 4 Shintens, totaling up to a gain of 1080 potency. That is more than a Midari. This does not account for crit and direct hit RNG as it will be much more. On raid fights on this tier, you can use third eye up to 20 times per fight earning you a whopping 2160 potency gain. 
Optimization tip number 5. Keeping Higanbana uptime. Higanbana makes part of a huge portion of your damage. Hence, keeping it up at all times is extremely important. Naturally, when you do the loop rotation for Samurai, Higanbana will always be up at all times. However, the tricky part comes when a fight has downtime and you can no longer do the loop. That is where ad hoc comes into play. The best thing to do in such cases is normally spread sheeting. However, spread sheeting often tends to not work on varying kill times. Hence, ad hoc is the next best thing to do to learn to adapt actively per situation per fight. Optimization tip number 6. Never overcap your sense and your Kenki gauge. Overcapping your sense can result in huge damage losses ranging from low amounts of potency up to losing a mid in a fight. Hence, avoid doing so. In the case you are going to overcap your sense, plan ahead and make sure you use Hagakure to eat up that extra sense for extra Kenki. Hagakure by itself is a loss but we lessen that loss when we eat an extra send for Kenki as Kenki is more damage. Never overcap on your Kenki gauge as well as extra Kenki can be potential shindens. Optimization tip number 7. Using meditation. Use meditation as much as you can during downtime, that is whereby you can't hit anything in a fight. This builds up 10 Kenki every 3 seconds up to 15 seconds. It also builds meditation stacks to cost Shoha, earning you a total of 580 potency for that extra Shoha and also 108 potency for each 10 Kenki you build up. Optimization tip number 8. Yatan P and Gyotan. Minimize the use of Yatan P even as a filler, as it causes you to disengage from the boss and it is Kenki neutral. Make sure you do not go tend to the boss after a Yatan P in cases whereby you do not lose an auto attack and you keep your GCD rolling. You should always use Gyoten in case it were to earn you an extra GCD. Optimization tip number 9. Always use your cooldowns as up, at most delay them by a few GCDs for buffs unless you know your kill time and your group is actively delaying buffs. Ensure that you do not lose a use of your cooldowns by delaying them for the buff. A very simple example is how you use your burst before limit cut on P2S, it earns you an extra use of them in case you reach enrage on that fight itself. Optimization tip number 10. Spreadsheeting. This is Samurai Endgame. Spreadsheeting refers to mapping every single of our GCDs out on a fight on a spreadsheet. Normally, this is not recommended for beginners as spreadsheeting is a lot of work. It requires extremely deep knowledge of the job to perform correctly as well as a specific kill time. Spreadsheeting is also the reason why new samurai players will tend to get confused about why the highest ranked samurais are doing certain things they cannot understand. This includes things like fillers at all times or known, playing sub-optimally for personal DPS while maximizing bursts under raid buffs for speed kills, using Hagakure on sense under Meikyo, etc. In short, spreadsheeting is ad hoc at its top. Optimization tip number 11. Know how to do your reopeners. In most fights that has downtime, you will have different reopeners that have to be done depending on the amount of sense you ended the previous phase with. For example, if you ended with a Yukikaze Sen and you have no buffs, you start the new phase by building both buffs and doing a Midare then proceed into Higanbana. This maximizes Meikyo as well. If you end with 0 Sen and you have both buffs, you start the new phase by building a Gekko or Kasha Sen into Higanbana followed by another Gekko or Kasha into a Hakaze and Yukikaze and a Midare. If you have 3 Sens and you have no buffs, you start by manually building the Jinpu buff into Midare, then make your Kasha or Hakaze Shifu and Kasha and then you proceed from there. There are lots of ways to do reopeners, so feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I will guide you per the situation you are in. Thank you guys for watching this video, I hope it was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.